All right, I'm gonna answer five of your questions in five minutes. This is your hashtag LLTV Q&A session, and I'm gonna hold myself. Only five minutes this time, no going over, stick around. Lean TV. I'm Brad Guthrie. This is a very chilled setting. I just got back from the gym. I'm kind of unwinding right now, but I wanted to answer five of your guys' questions. First question is from Winnie. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce your last name. Sorry. G U O. Her question is Do pork chops really contain parasites? It could be a myth. Maybe it's true. All I know is when you heat the pork chops, it's going to kill the parasites anyway if they're even in there, which they maybe not. But I'm not concerned about it, just cook your meat through it. Pork chops are in my diet. Next question from Lot W51. Question is, thanks for the great info. Wondering if you could talk about dark chocolate. Would you recommend organic? How much per day? And what is the lowest percentage dark chocolate you would recommend? Excellent question. You may be surprised. I do eat dark chocolate, but I only eat dark chocolate that is at least 70% cacao percentage. I try to get above 80% whenever possible, but try to get above 70%. And that just means the more rich it is in antioxidants. So look for dark chocolate. The higher the cacao percentage, the more healthy it's gonna be for you. And great question when it comes to how much should you have per day? Because it's not like a typical milk chocolate Kit Kat bar. You don't eat the full bar in one serving. That would be a huge amount of calories. It's so rich, all you need is like two to three squares per serving. So one of those chocolate bars, depending on what size you buy, could be upwards of six to 10 servings per like one chocolate bar. And she mentioned, does organic matter? Organic could be better, but just because something says organic on the label doesn't mean the ingredients are actually that much better because some organic foods have bad ingredients. So you wanna look for the cleanest ingredients possible words that you can pronounce, and try to stay away from the chocolate that has the soy in it. Next question uh, from Green, with a lot of E's, 1021. Question is, hey Brad, what are your opinions on coconut palm sugar? I actually just shot a Food Wars on healthy sweeteners, natural sweeteners, and I didn't really talk about coconut palm sugar, but I actually bought some myself. I haven't used it yet, but I do know that it is lower glycemic, but at the end of the day, as I mentioned in my food wars, it is a sugar. It will raise blood sugar, so you wanna make sure you minimize the usage of the sugar. It is a healthier alternative than any artificial sweeteners or refined sugars, but just make sure you don't think it's healthy and you have it every single meal or every single day. Next question from the Camilla, K-M-I-L-A. Brad, could you please explain more about acidity and alkaline food? I do know that green vegetables and most vegetables are very alkaline and you want to make sure your body is in a more of an alkaline state. So on a pH balance of 7 is right in the middle. You want to have it a little bit more towards the alkaline state. So you want to make sure that the foods that you're eating, you always have a good serving of vegetables with every single meal that you have. Now when it comes to acidic foods, a lot of meat eggs, chicken, which I always talk about being healthy because it's a good source of protein, they are acidic foods. So that's why I always balance my serving of protein, my serving of meat with green vegetables to kind of give that alkaline balance to the, that acidic food. Um, other acidic foods, dairy is very acidic, wheat is very acidic. Just make sure that you're always eating a lot of green vegetables. And last question before I cut this off is from RUG27. Mame. I, I don't know how to pronounce half of these words. Their question, I don't know if it's guy or girl, is does cutting calories cause muscle loss? Well, here, well, here's the thing. When you're in a calorie surplus, you're going to add mass, whether it's fat or whether it's muscle. When you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to burn fat or you're going to burn muscle. If you're in a maintenance level where you're actually expending as much calories as what you're taking in, you're going to maintain your body. So if you're looking to lose fat, but you're looking to maintain muscle or still build muscle, just make sure you don't go too much of a calorie deficit. If you cut too drastically, your body will burn muscle for energy as well. So you just have to be very smart with how you're doing this with your diet. Don't go too crazy. Don't get too aggressive. Maybe just go in about a 300 calorie deficit per day and see how your body reacts. If you notice that you're losing muscle, add in some more calories 
but you know what? You just kind of have to play around with it. So that should be about five minutes. I'm not really watching a clock or anything. Hopefully you did take away some insights from those questions. Keep them coming in, hashtag LLTV, and I will get to them in a future episode. I still have a long list here. So if you like this video, please show your support by clicking that like button right down there. Subscribe, share, and leave a comment for future stuff you guys wanna see. We're back again tomorrow, Freestyle Friday. We'll see you guys then. For more workouts and recipes to live lean, visit bradgothrofitness.com, click that subscribe button you see on the screen, or watch one of these two other videos you see below.